All right, guys, so in this video, we're checking out the Diatone Tina Whoop RTF kit. And this kit comes with a bunch of products that I've already done full review videos on. So I'm not going to cover every little detail again. I will refer you to those videos down in the description. You guys can check out those separate videos if you'd like. I did a video on the Tina Whoop itself. And the RTF version basically is the same, except it has the receiver already uh, installed and bound to the radio link transmitter here and I did a video on this transmitter as well so these two things are already bound and set up and it's ready to fly hence the, the, the term RTF it does not come with any extra batteries um, this battery here is a URUV 550 milliamp hour graphene this is one of the batteries I flew it with I think something in this in the range of a 450 to 550 3S battery, I guess, is going to be fine. That's what I mostly flew on this one here. I flew um, 2S and 3S, uh, 450 to 550 batteries on this one. And uh, since it's the same, basically same setup, everything worked just fine on this one as well. So in addition to the uh, transmitter, you get a nice case here. And so it holds the transmitter and the drone. Get a micro USB cable for charging the transmitter. That's charged via the uh, micro USB port here. So you just plug that into a power source. You're gonna need like a power brick or something to charge up that. Uh, no batteries for the drone. You get um, your basic set of documentation about the drone itself. Uh, bag of spare parts and screws, uh, battery strap, screwdriver, zip ties. And you get the spare set of the little prop guards and different colors. This is the same stuff that comes with the original Tina Whoop. And of course you do get a uh, set of instructions that are specific for this RTF kit. And the thing that um, is most important is how to do the arming and the flight modes. And so I'll talk about that here right now. It was a little confusing for me as to uh, how this worked because this I didn't hook this up to a computer or anything. Uh, it's kind of the whole point of these RTF kits is not having to plug this into a computer and do any kind of setup. It's all set up from the factory and ready to go. So um, that's kind of why people would go for these things. So if you've been like kind of thinking about getting into doing like some cinema whipping, you know, maybe adding like a Insta360 Go camera to something like that, like I've done here on this little modification. Again, check out that video. Then this is going to be really um, a good setup for you to get going. Now, the thing is, this RTF kit doesn't have a set of goggles. So um, some people say, well, that's a bad thing or a good thing. Kind of depends. I think it's okay. And, you know, everyone wants a different kind of set of goggles and everyone's face is different. So the goggles that may or may not come with this, um, you know, might not work for you. So it's like, if you do end up getting an RTF kit and the goggles don't work for you, then you end up just buying another set of goggles and those goggles end up going unused and it's kind of a waste. So uh, I can see where they come from here and in terms of their philosophy, it's, uh, you know, uh, it would be better to just get these two things that already work together and then you just get a set of FPP goggles that you think are going to work better for you. I'll list a bunch of goggles that might kind of fit the bill, some sort of general good ones that a lot of people have found to be pretty good. So I'll list those down in the description. Obviously with goggles, it's very subjective and personal. So you may or may not like any of those. So I would, again, stress doing some research as to what kind of goggles might work for you. But if you want to get into this sort of cinema whipping FPV, then you know, get this kit, you're ready to go. And then you have a uh, set of goggles you should pick up and then you should be uh, good to go in terms of getting this up in the air. Okay, so regarding arming here. This has a, a pre-arm switch here that's using this momentary switch which you have to press and hold and then you have to flip the switch here from the disarm to the arm position. So in the instructions the pre-arm switch is this one here. You have to press and hold this and then switch this one from the disarm position to the arm position. So basically the up position is disarmed and the down position is arm. And I was able to arm on the middle, so either the middle or the down will work. 
So this is disarmed, you know, this is armed. In order to arm the quad, if you just flip the switch here, it won't arm. That's a safety thing. I think they've implemented this one here. So you have to press and hold the pre-arm switch here, press and hold it down, then flip it into the arm mode and let go. And then the quad will arm and then you can take off. Now there's three flight modes here on the other switch. So you have level mode, acro mode, and flip over mode. So in the up switch here, that's level mode. The middle position is acro mode. And then the down position is the flip over mode or Basically flip over mode is if you are flipped over like this and you want to turtle it, so it's upright again, so you can fly. You want to be in this position here, and then you'll be in turtle mode and you can flip it over by arming the quad. So you arm it and then you can flip it over and then you know, disarm it and then put it back into one of, the other, one of the other two modes that you're normally flying in. So most people will either fly in angle mode or you can fly in outcome mode. So those are the two of uh, flying modes available to you. So that's pretty much it in terms of getting this going. If you want all the details on the specs and the parts and all that are in here, check out the original video on the Tina Whoop. Uh, that'll be linked in the description. I've already done some upgrades in this one as well. So this will be some other videos you can check out uh, if you want to do some upgrades. You can see I've done things like uh, the Insta 360 Go mount and I've actually changed the way the battery is mounted on this one. This one here is mounted uh, front to back. But on the one that I did previously, I have it mounted side to side with some rubber bands. So those are some things you want to want to change. And then also I changed the antenna as well to get better video reception. So those are uh, some of the things you could possibly change in uh, this one if you want. But you know, obviously, if you just want to get up in the air, uh, you will have to buy some batteries as well. So I'll link this one as well in the description and some goggles. Pick up those things with this and it's pretty much ready to go. You just have to charge up uh, the radio charge up your uh, flight batteries and obviously your whatever goggles you have batteries for those and you should be good to go to fly so i'll link all those other videos down in the description you can check those out if you want to see more details on the other products and uh, yeah there's some flight footage and i'll talk to you guys in the next video